Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to another Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. This is episode 64, Turnabout Time Travel. The second episode, I guess, uh, something about time travel. I don't know. So your first like goal is 100 likes. Let's get those likes up if we haven't already. And it's time for more Ace Attorney. Thank you guys so much for getting a thousand views yesterday, so we're able to continue the series today. Hi, everybody. Awesome. All right, so game selection, we're on... Where were we? All right, we're over here. Uh, turnabout time traveler. So after the chasing after butts. I guess that could be the name of the episode. I I don't really know. I guess that's what it's called. Chasing after butts. <sighs> it seems weird. Eh, I don't think I can fit it all. I could say chasing butts. Ah, that's the best I could do. Great to see you guys and girls in the chat. Hi, Mr. Divergence. Hi, Juan. Hi, Princess Emmy. Hello, Game Wing One. Hi, Everly. Hi, Digi Vixen. Hello, JS. Hi, Anthony and Pop uh, Popstar. Pop. Hi, J Cat. Hello, um, Anthony. And Charles Demmer uh, renewed his membership today and uh, did a super chat earlier. Thank you, Charles Thank Demmer. You, Charles. And hi, Jessica and Papa's Cruz. And uh, Juan and everyone, Jade Rose, hope you guys are all doing awesome today. And I don't think we have the like goal of 100 likes in this in the chat. Alright. So today we're doing Larry's Waltz. Yes, 100 likes is your first goal, guys and gals. Uh, yesterday the likes got all torpedoed, so we're going to try to do our best with them today. All right, thank you so much for the super chat, Justo Kenobi. Says, I wonder how the time travel worked, assuming it actually was time travel. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I mean, stranger things have happened in Ace Attorney, so. Yep. Thank you so much, Justo Kenobi. You're breathtaking. Thank you so much for the help. Appreciate that so much, Justo. Thank you. I got my little thing there. Okay, okay, okay. All righty. Hmm. All right, let's party. Uh, what you saw in the airship? I have to magnetize this wool. Take that! Larry doesn't look uh, amused. What Larry is hiding? Uh, this is no time for games, Larry. I will find out what you're hiding. I'm telling you, Nick. Uh, you've got it all wrong. I've got nothing to do with this case whatsoever. <laughs> uh, come on, Larry. Even a baby could see through such a blatant lie. Nothing whatsoever, huh? If you weren't involved, Larry, then you wouldn't have been involved with this person. Uh, what person? Um, the lady that probably the lady that we that he rescued. Oh, Ellen. I'm guessing. I mean, I'm guessing that. I don't know. Okay, so we'll present El Ellie. Ellen. Take that! You're the one who brought Ellen to my office in the first place, dummy. And all those cops, too. Um, hmm. Nothing to do with this case whatsoever isn't gonna cut it this time, Larry. If you have to lie, at least do a better job of it. Oh! Uh... Don't diss me, Nick! If you're like so convinced I'm lying, then let me ask you this. What makes you think I was on that stupid old airship anyway? Let me see some proof if you got any. Oh, doubling down, are you? Fine. You want proof? Here's your proof you were on the airship. How about your business card wallet? Take that! Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, this is somebody's business card, isn't it, Larry? I found it in the reception hall. Yuck. Oh. Time to come clean, Larry Butts. What exactly are you hiding? Uh... Alright, fine. You got me. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> Unlock successful. Well, that was easy. Alright. What you saw in the airship. What's going on? 
Yeah, what's going on, Larry? Larry? What were you doing on that airship, anyway? Hey, well, I want to deliver the welcome to our wedding sign they ordered from me. Huh? I didn't know you were on, uh, took on real jobs like that, too. Well, for your information, my wedding welcome signs are very popular on the net. And that's how you met Ellen? right yo I have seen her in the photo for the welcome signs, but seeing her in person... When she smiled at me and said, thank you... <sighs> I feel like I've been hit by lightning. And that's when you fell in love with somebody else's bride, huh? Wow. So you were uh, invited to the reception? Can you believe they told me only family and relatives could attend? They wouldn't even let me into the reception hall. Smart move on their part, actually. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'd started wandering around the airship. That's when I dropped my business card wallet. So somebody else must have found it, huh? And brought it to the reception hall then. But you know what? I saw something incredible when I was on, uh, on that flying chapel. Like... Get a load of this! What is the heck it... What am I seeing here? What do you mean, what is this? Isn't it obvious? It's a drawing! Uh... I, like, sketched a picture of one of the cabins on the airship. So, what's so incredible about this cabin, then? Hey, look at... Uh, outside the window. The pterodactyl. It's one of those flying dinosaurs. A real live pterodactyl. It looked like... I looked out the cabin, and there it was, flying out there. The airship traveled through time, I tell you. Um... What? What? When I told the Pierce Butler guy about it, he told me to never mention it to nobody ever again. Why would they try to keep you from spouting what is clearly just nonsense? Maybe Sprocket Aviation is secretly developing Time Machine? No, no way! Wow. N -n Nick! This case is, uh, uh, totally amazing! I knew Maya would say something like that. That's because Maya is my spirit animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Larry! You didn't tell Mr. Edgeworth about this, did you? Of course not! Edgy just uh, rolls his eyes and thinks I'm off my rocker. He didn't even let me tell him I was... I didn't even tell him I was wandering around on the airship. I told him I met Ellie at the mooring dock and we ran away together. <laughs> yeah, I can see Edgeworth just rolling his eyes out of his head if he heard about this. Larry's drawing added to the court record. So Larry also experienced a time slip somehow. But how is that even possible? Yeah... Hey, Nick, I'll be taking my card wallet back if you don't mind. Business card wallet swiped back by Larry Butts. Oh, yeah, this is for you. What is it? It's a picture of the hold I took when I was wandering around the airship. Okay. See, there's Ellie right there in the middle. Ah, the hold, huh? Uh, hmm. you see? It's like right there on the diagram. Okay. Okay, so now I know where the hold is, but what is Ellen doing there? Well, there was, uh, they were using a prepping area for the reception. I see, and around, uh, when did you take this? Before the reception, I took it while Ellie was getting everything ready. So this was taken before the incident occurred, huh? Uh, don't know if it'll be any help, but, uh, thanks for this anyway. Photo of hold added to the court record. By the way, Larry, I heard that the door to the hold is controlled by a security system. So how did you get in there? Uh, that's a trade secret, I can't tell ya! Uh, and the hits just keep on coming. Well, I guess that's basically a wrap on the investigation. Not quite, Nick. I want to meet Ellen, too! Oh, that's right. You haven't met her yet. Have you? Wait. Oh, no, she hasn't. I don't remember. Okay. All right, let's head over to the detention center. Then you can say hi. 
Okay. Yeah, you want to say hi, Larry? Oh, wait, no. Larry was with us last time. That's why. That's why. I'm just getting my characters messed up. He may be kind of dumb, but he's a good artist, says Peter. Yeah, that was a very precise drawing of that um, pterodactyl. You could easily tell what it was supposed to be. I think it was a scribble. Uh, there is no other bird that has a beak like that except for a pterodactyl. Well, I know that, but I'm saying it was just a, it was a it scribble. It was a scribble, but at least you got the details of it correct. Mm, yeah. Um, you can say hi to the chat for a sec. I have to go wash my hands real quick. Okay. 10, 50. <sighs> All right. Um, oh, yeah, and well, I'm just trying to share the video and stuff, but I guess I can stop doing that to say hi. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, um, everyone in the chat. Hello. Good to see you guys. Hope you guys are doing well. And uh, so it looks like we're having an exciting case today. We've got um, time travel and uh, a pterodactyl outside the guy's window, which is pretty cool. Um, hi Everly, hi Digi Vixen, hello Peter, hi Spiral Link fan, hi Larray, um, hello, says, what is Larry hiding? I don't know, Larray. Hi, pop star pup. Maybe she could have dreamed it up? Yeah, it's possible, pop star. Um, hi Garth, hi J-Cat, hello Brandon. I wonder if they really did figure out time travel. Um, and maybe that's what my, why they're trying to cover Ellen up. Maybe they're trying to cover up, maybe she knows about time travel, so they're trying to get rid of her because of that. I don't know. Hi, Princess Emmy. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Game Wing 1. Um, well, as much as I know about time travel, I, I think, I think you're supposed to, you have to go past the speed of light to travel through time, according to Einstein. So that would be pretty, pretty amazing feat if they were able to do that. Yep. Uh, no, why? Why? Please understand that this is in Master Sorin's best interest. <laughs> Sounds like Elian's busy talking with someone. Oh, it's you again. The next president cannot be married to a criminal. It would disgrace the Sprocket Aviation. Oh, that's Miss why Ellen, I need you to forget about this marriage. Pardon us, but, uh, if it isn't Mr. Wright... Oh, so their marriage is definitely off, huh? There is no other choice. We cannot have a criminal in the family. For the sake of Master Soren and the Sprocket family, this is what is best. Oh, no! Um, in that case, what if Nick here proved I Ellen's innocence? Then you wouldn't have a criminal in the family, right? I suppose you're right, but I am afraid that will be impossible. That's not true. Not for Nick. He may look like a nobody, but he can do some pretty amazing things for looking like a nobody. I don't take cases on lightly, so rest assured I will prove her innocent. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I understand your name is quite well known in the judicial world. For better or worse... Okay, Pierce, I want you to promise me this. If I can prove Ellen's innocence, then you won't stand in the way of Soren and Ellen's marriage. Hmm, very well. But not even the most talented lawyer in the world can change reality itself. Here I go with my hanky again. And reality is Miss Ellen is guilty beyond all shadow of a doubt. I believe that's uh, where you're wrong, Pierce. I'm clean? I swear I am! Obsessively, compulsively clean. Just as clean as pure as his pure white dress. Hmm. Fine. You have my word, but you will be the one to regret this promise. What does that even mean? Now, if you'll excuse me. Now I have uh, all the more reason to win this case. That dude is pretentious. Ellen, we finished our investigation, and we'd like to talk with you about what we found. Oh, the top of her dress is a heart. Okay, so what did you find out? Okay, here we go. Yeah, her dress is a heart on the top. It's so cute. Mm. Okay, so I'm not having problems with my glasses, then. 
weird. What's the matter? What's happening? Uh, the picture's getting fuzzy. It's like going in and out. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. Uh, investigation results. Um, in, uh, in the course of your investigation, we heard, or sorry, not our, invest not your investigation. In the course of our investigation, we heard that you had been standing in front of the victim with the murder weapon in your hands. Ah! So much for getting all, there she is. It wasn't what it looked like! It's true I was holding the murder weapon! But when I found him, he was already dead! I panicked! And I was hoping I would go back in time again, like I had done earlier! So I picked up the timekeeper from the pedestal and brought it over without thinking! No, okay. You were so desperate you were ready to try anything, huh? Unfortunately, that sort of behavior makes you an easy target for the uh, prosecution. No! And as your uh, little trip through time, well, none of your in-laws could confirm your story, I'm afraid. I see! The only exception is Larry. He said he saw something. Really? What did he see? Time travel. Maybe Larry will get the girl this time if her own fiance doesn't care about her. Ha! <laughs> Larry get the girl. Now that's something. Okay, here we go. What can you tell me about this? Oh, never mind that. What about Soren? Oh, Soren, do you suppose he hates me? No! I really couldn't say. Oh, what if? What if? What if he doesn't love me anymore because of all of this? Whatever shall I? Oh, oh no, she's gonna start crying again. I really don't think he hates you, Ellen. You don't? Really? Yes, really. Probably. So don't cry. You only cause him more a heartache if you do. Yes, you're right. As a sprocket bride, I have to hold my head up high at all times. I better really watch what I say around Ellen. But how could the Sprockets allow him to marry, like, a girl that's not of, like, high society? They seem pretty high, uh, hoity toity. Well, I mean, they obviously paid for the wedding and went through with it. They should have said something before the wedding. Mm. If they really didn't like her, they should have just told her that before the wedding. It's not fair to go through the whole thing and then frame her for murder. Yeah, that's That was true. kind of stupid. They should have just yelled at her before and been like, you're not good enough. If they really didn't want her to marry their son, they could have easily fired her before the wedding. Yeah, there's that. I mean, she works for them. I can't say I quite believe it myself, but Larry claims he saw something pretty incredible. He claims that he saw a pterodactyl flying outside the airship. Wh what? Not only that, but apparently Pierce uh, told Larry to keep quiet about it. Pierce do such a thing! Larry's theory is that Sprocket Aviation is developing something in secret! A time machine to be exact! Do you think... Do you think this is why nobody would confirm my story? Because it's a secret? I really don't know, but speaking of your in-laws, we did manage to find your keycard at the Sprocket Manor. One of your in-laws said he'd keep an eye on it for you. Oh, thank goodness! I lost it while I was getting things ready for the reception! I looked everywhere for it! I'm so glad you found it! At least they're tears of joy this time, for a change. Mm, yep. Well, Nick! It looks like you'll have to prove the existence of time travel in court tomorrow. That's right, I swear! That while Mr. Gloomsbury was being killed, I was busy traveling back through time! Great, with this, uh, with, 
with the stoic, uh, skeptic Edgeworth at the helm for, uh, the prosecution tomorrow. We're really gonna have our work cut out for us. Uh... Oops. She really believes in time travel. That could be a huge problemo. To be continued! Alright guys, uh, we're about 20 minutes in? 20 minutes in, 83 likes, not bad. Mm. Time to go on to the actual court case, I believe. Yep, trial day one. This is gonna be a zany one. Next chapter. Okay. Twenty-one minutes. Next chapter. September twenty-second, eight forty-five a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number Three. All right, here we go. Uh, good morning, Mr. Wright. Hey, good morning, Ellen. I see you're still wearing your wedding gown. And I will continue to wear it until our marriage is saved. Okay. Oh, Soren! Do you think he came to see how she's holding up, Nick? Soren, my love, you came all the way to the courthouse just to see me? Oh, Soren, I don't know what to say. Blueprints. Huh? The engine blueprints, I can't find them. Do you know where they are? Oh, they're in your room. Third show from the bottom on the right hand side. Ah, I see. He's leaving already? Wow. Don't tell me he came just to ask about some stupid blueprints. Is he really that cold of a person? Or is that just how he comes off, I wonder? Oh, what about me, Soren? Ellen? Oh, he's back. Come home soon. I'm lost without you. S -s -s -soren! Later. So he's an introvert. Looks like showing your vulnerabilities is the fastest way to capturing a woman's heart. Yeah, it helps. That's for sure. You should take notes on this, Nick. Huh? Please leave me out of this. Anyway, it looks like Soren isn't big on words. But it's clear that he cares about Ellen, I guess. Knowing that, I actually feel kind of relieved, because I thought he was a two-timing jerk, but... I know, right? Wow. <laughs> Um... Mr. Wright! I absolutely can't be found guilty, you hear? What is going on? Zelda? Link? What's going on? Which one of you is, is causing mischief? Bad Linky. Okay. Don't worry, I'm going to do everything I can to prove you're innocent somehow. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Really, Link? The trial's about to start, sir. Edgeworth, knowing him, he's not going to yield an inch. So I've just got to fight with everything I've got and save Ellen. Where's Mr. Spray Bottle? I'm gonna go give that cat a little bath. He shouldn't be going under there. I knew he was gonna go under there. Oh, aren't we being a good little boy now? You sir, you saw that I brought the squirt bottle out, huh? Huh? 
September 22nd, 9 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 6. Court is now in session. All rise for the Honorable Me. It is I. Yay. Court is now in session for the trial of Ellen Watt. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. You're late. Wow, seeing so many familiar faces uh, gathered around like this. It feels as though I'm in a great grand reunion. It makes me want to go out for dinner and drink and reminisce with all of you. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, Judge. I was dying for a real burger the whole time I was away. We could make it a welcome back party for Maya. <laughs> How about it, Edgy? Hmm. I have no intention of cavorting with my enemies. Now then, Your Honor, let us start this trial at once. Hmm. Oh, oh, still on the light-hearted banter, are you, Edgeworth? I know you hang out with Wright and company. You can go to his daughter's uh, backyard parties. <laughs> Jokes and good humor are beyond worthless in the court of law. But yes, I do go to the barbecues. Guess we'll just have to have the party without him then, huh? However, were it after the conclusion of this trial, I might consider joining you for your little welcome back party. <clears throat> I certainly wouldn't mind an invite at the very least. He's still as emotionally constipated as ever, is he? Oh, yes, good times. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please go over the details of this case for us. The victim was... Do whoops. I, I got it. I almost messed up. The victim was Domas Gloomsbury, a servant in the Sprocket household. He was in the attendance at the wedding reception that occurred from 7 to 10 p.m. Mr. Gloomsbury apparently felt some um, animosity toward Ellen Watt, and so, a bit after the reception ended at 10 p.m., he assaulted her with the intent to kill her. Mm. The defendant fought back and ended up killing Mr. Gloomsbury. Mm, in other words, it was a justified self-defense case, correct? If that's the case, then the defendant might not be criminally responsible. He's right about that. Worst case there. Ah! It's right about that. Worst case scenario, I could go for self-defense to avoid the criminal charge. I wonder how Edgeworth plans to counter that, though. Hmm. The prosecution's first witness will make my view on the matter clear, Your Honor. Well. Very well. Bailiff, please bring in the first witness, if you could. So, he doesn't think it's self-defense. Wait, who is that? Oh. It's Emma. Emma. Please state your name and occupation, witness. Emma Sky, forensic investigator. And I'd just like to say, sir, that being in the same courtroom as you is a great honor. Hmm. Oh, that's right. You're a fan of Edgeworth's, aren't you, Emma? We're good friends and all, Mr. Wright. But just this once, I intend to faithfully and fully testify for the prosecution. And I do mean that wholeheartedly. <laughs> I expect no less from you. Yes, sir. I'm going to do my very best. Right. Looks like you lost the popularity contest to Mr. Edgeworth, Nick. Eh, I really could care less. Besides, she'll see who's the better lawyer once I win this trial. Yeah, maybe then you can actually really care less. Now then, Detective Sky, if you please. Forensic Detective Sky. Something that more on the matter or something. Uh, rundown of the case. Okay, so we're going to do time code. Uh, next chapter, rundown of the case. 2940. Rundown. Down. Oh, of case. Okay. Here we go. Rundown of the case. The murder weapon was a clock called the Timekeeper. The victim was hit with it from behind, and he fell over right into the lantern. The defendant was spotted then, standing in front of the body, holding the murder weapon. The victim was struck twice, by the way. 
Hmm. It was struck twice? That's right. There's no mistake about it. Okay. The first blow was to the back of the victim's head. It was hard enough to knock him unconscious. Yet, despite the fact that he had been immobilized by the first blow, the defendant delivered a second fatal blow to the side of the victim's head. Uh, which means, what exactly? Right, right, right. I figured it would go right over your head. Let's put it this way. By striking the victim a second time, the defendant killed her last chance to escape any criminal wrongdoing. She did, but how, Mr. Edgeworth? The defendant may have been fighting back because she was being attacked. However, she then went on to deliver a fatal blow to a man who was already unconscious. Nick, is he saying what I think he is? I don't feel so well. And thus, Mr. Wright has justified self-defense been removed from the table. The prosecution intends to prove that the defendant killed the victim with a murderous intent. Allow me to blatant, uh, allow me to submit the victim's autopsy report. Uh, ah! That's not fair. So that's why I was acting all smug. Well, more smug than usual. It's, it's fine, right, Nick? Huh? It's not like we're going to have to plead self-defense anyway, right? Right, but now the judge has a negative impression of Ellen. Hmm. He may not get to prosecute much anymore, but he definitely hasn't lost his touch. Autopsy report has been added to the court record. They didn't even give us their report before. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. I mean, how would she know he's not unconscious? You just keep hitting the guy until he stays down. I know. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like One hit's not enough. How would you know? What if he got back up and tried to kill her after that? Exactly. He could be pretending to be unconscious. You don't know. You could let your guard down and then he gets you. All right. Exactly. Rundown of the case. The murder weapon was a clock called the Timekeeper. Oh, Hey guys, we're 30 minutes in with only 86 likes, so let's get those likes up if we haven't already. Really helps out the channel tremendously, thank you. Holding. Are you completely sure the murder weapon was the timekeeper? Yes, completely. The shape of the injury on the victim's head matches up with that of the timekeeper. It's definitely heavy enough to kill someone with. But why, uh, but would the defendant have been able to pick up and swing something so heavy? I tried it myself, and I was able to lift it just fine. Maybe you're just freakishly strong? Excuse me, Mr. Wright? I'll have you know that people on the force know me as the dainty forensic investigator. Sorry, but really, you're hardly a delicate flower. Mr. Wright... This is a court of law, so your antics for after the trial, if you know how. Uh, yes, sir. It won't happen again, sir. Hmm. Moving on. Hmm. <laughs> the victim was hit with it from behind, and he fell over right onto the lantern. Holy okay. The defendant was fighting back against the victim, right? If so, wouldn't she have hit him from the front, not from the behind? The victim must have tried to run once Miss Wyatt started fighting back. That's probably when he got hit from behind. Why would he run from her? I see. Thus the blow to the back of his head. The defendant must have looked awfully scary when she was brandishing that clock. I don't know about that. Why would a clock be scary? Regardless of how scary Ellen looked, the victim was definitely hit from behind. A grown man fleeing from a very tiny girl in a bridal gown with a clock? I don't know. Are you guys hitting the guitar? I oh. can't tell what they're doing. Alright, yeah. May I go on? Yeah, of course. Please do. 
The defendant was spotted then, standing in front of the body, holding the murder weapon. Hold it! But that's only because she was panicked when she found the body. That she tried to use the timekeeper to go back in time. Objection! I'm sorry, what? Mr. Wright? Do you have any idea how absurd you sound? Uh, but Miss Watt really believed she could travel through time with that clock. You really should have come up with a more credible story, you know. Yes, I agree. I've seen Back to the Future quite a few times. <laughs> and you use a car. <laughs> Me three, but it's all I've got to go on. Anyway, under the circumstances, the only conclusion we can draw is that the defendant killed the victim. In self-defense. Yeah, exactly. The victim was struck twice, by the way. Hold it! Miss Watt uh, must have had a chance to escape after she struck the victim the first time. So why would she stick around and hit him with a heavy object again? Well, about that... Allow me to explain. Why did she strike him again? Indeed, to finish off the victim, of course. This very act clearly shows that she had every intention of killing Mr. Gloomsbury. Uh. But Miss Wyatt would never do a thing like that! I thought her name's Miss Watt. Was that not it? I thought it was Wyatt. No. It's supposed to be similar to Watt. I can call her Miss Watt if it makes you feel better. Okay. But it clearly says W-Y-A-T-T. -T. I thought it was Watt, like as an electrical joke or something. Wait. All right. We'll call her Miss Watt from now on then. But Miss Watt would never do a thing like that! Okay. Then let's see some evidence that disproves my theory. Ah! Are you going to just stand there and take that from him, Nick? Huh? Oh, yeah. Can't refute his claim head on, so I'll have to approach it from a different angle. Well, it looks like we won't be going anywhere until we can refute Edgeworth's claim. This is so exciting! We'll have... We haven't taken on Mr. Edgeworth in ages, Nick! Yeah. Okay, Nick. Now go get him! No need to rush me, Maya. All right. I better start by comparing Emma's uh, testimony with the evidence we have. And look for any glaring inconsistencies. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to present something. 38 minutes. Alright, well, why don't, I mean, let's see if there's any inconsistencies with... Um, she said that he was... She explained how he died... He fell over onto the lantern. Let's see if there's anything we can present with that. Hmm. I think oh. there's stuff in the court record. Just, I don't know if it contradicts it. Okay, where's the photo of where he fell? There. So she said he fell over, got hit in the head and behind, and fell over forward onto the lantern. But he's actually lying back right now. The body was found collapsed inside of the pang bull, or pegable. Scattered around his body were flower petals, a note, and broken parts of the lantern. The petals were found from flowers not found inside the reception hall. Yeah, I think we should present the picture because it, he's not, he didn't fall forward over the lantern. Okay. Doesn't make any sense. I think that contradicts what she said. Alright guys, you were uh, 10 away from uh, your first light goal. Let's uh, try to finish before the 50 minute mark if we can. Thank you very much. Present victim of photo. Wait. Present photo victim. Present the victim of the... Um... Photo of victim. Yeah, that too. Objection! Detective Sky, I'm afraid I have to apologize in advance. Oh, for what? Hmm. For embarrassing you in front of your idol. <laughs> what do you mean? Huh? Oh, yeah. If you take a look at this fo photo of the crime scene... Cat's going in the basement. What are you guys doing? Are you... Furball. Is how you get your food? Thuggery is how you get your food. All right, guys. While Amber deals with the cat situation, let's get those likes up. 
What, are, what were they doing? They're trying to... They're they're throwing things around so you have to feed them? Monkey see, monkey do. So she's teaching him bad behavior. She's teaching him how to be a spoiled brat. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Alright, you'll see that the victim is lying on his back. But if the victim had been hit from behind, as you so claim... Then he should have fallen over into the lantern face down. It's not enough to simply take someone's side, Detective Sky, even if it is Mr. Edgeworth. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright guys, 93 out of 100, keep going. 41 minutes into the stream. Uh, oh! Oh! Hmm, there does appear to be a flaw in Detective Sky's testimony. Hold it! Mr. Wright, if you think I'm going to just back right down, you're sadly mistaken. Emma's unusually fired up today. I wonder why. Don't forget, she's in front of her hero, Nick. Edgy. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> if the Steel Samurai came to watch this trial, I'd want to do my best, too. Listen, Mr. Wright, it's entirely possible that the defendant moved the victim's body after he fell over. In that case, there wouldn't be any contradiction, right? Indeed. That was an excellent counter-argument, Detective. You can count on me, sir. So, uh, what do you have to say to that, Mr. Wright? Hmm, it is possible that the victim's body was moved after he fell into the lantern. It's not possible. Um, I don't think... I'd say it's not possible. That'd be my guess. Uh, I don't see him going along with her. Yeah, I don't. I don't think of. Um. What does the chat think? Chat, what do you know, think? What do you guys think? Is it possible or not possible? I don't. I think. I think that some of the stuff was uh like fell on top of him after he crashed. So how would, she would have had to rearrange all that stuff. So I think it's not possible. Like, so you think it's not possible? Yeah, I don't think it's possible. I think that's how the body was. Okay. I don't think that anybody moved it. Okay, Amber says nobody moved it. Chat says some people are saying impossible, some people are saying possible, some people are saying not possible. So we're going to use Amber as the, if we get a strike... It's not possible. You can blame me if we get a strike. Okay. Yeah. Well, it says there was some stuff that fell on him after he fell down. So she would have had to rearrange those things that were on top of him. There's no way. She would have had to rearrange every, the entire crime scene. I don't think it's possible. I agree. All right. I hate to burst your bubble, but uh, no. Sorry, detective. But there's no way that the victim's body was moved after his death. Oh, really? And what makes you so sure? I'm so glad you asked. One look at this here and it should become obvious. The petals. The flowers. There's flowers all over the body. I would, I would think that. You have flower petals on his knee, flower petals next to the body. Yeah, all those little pieces. I would I would point to one of those. Yeah, I think so. Or and also there's broken yeah. broken chair thingy here too. Yeah. There's a couple like things. Pieces of the lantern on him. All right, so we'll try the flower petal. Yeah, if not, we'll do the piece. Of the... Um uh, What exactly are you pointing at, Mr. Wright? No. Oh, uh this right here? <laughs> mm. What you're trying to communicate is not obvious at all, Mr. Wright. But this penalty should make you feel better. Ah, ah, wow. Ah, ah, ah. 
Oh, the only thing that's obvious right now is the pain in my attorney's badge. Okay, it's not the flower petals. So, maybe those pieces of the lantern. Okay, uh, one obvious look here, it's a broken chair. We'll try that. And we'll save. Mm -hmm. I'm one strike already. Whoopsies. Oops. Oops. Come on, guys, we're 45 minutes in. Still under 100 likes, let's go! Alright, I saved? I saved. I might have saved. No. So because you little rascals... I see what it is. Yeah, they're being absolute jerks. Little, little tiny terrors. Take that! There we go. Those broken bits of the lantern? Yeah, this is what I was trying to point out instead of the flower petals. If the bounty had been moved after the fact, these fragments uh, would have fallen off it. Would have fallen off the body. But as you can clearly see, they're lying perfectly undisturbed on top of the body. How about that? This means that the victim must have been lying face up from before the lantern even broke. Hmm. Uh, uh, you're right! Ha! Ah. Wait a minute, if that's true... Then when was this victim killed then, Nick? I mean, the lantern was still whole during the reception, right? <gasps> right. Maya, you've which, got a good point. Yeah, which means we've just overturned a major assumption about this case. If the victim was already dead before the lantern was even broken, then the body must have been inside the lantern since before the reception started. In other words, the defense asserts that the victim was killed before the wedding reception. <gasps> what? <laughs> we got the Ace Attorney music going. Da, 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 da. In short, when Miss Watt uh, was seen standing in front of the body after the reception, it wasn't the moment after, just after the murder was committed. Wow. Hang on. Yeah. It wasn't the moment just after the murder was committed. It was the moment she happened to discover the body, just as Miss Watt claims. Ah! Objection! Hmm. Whether the act was committed before or after the reception is entirely inconsequential. After all, it was the defendant who prepared the reception hall for the event in question. Hmm. Therefore, when the murder occurred, changes nothing with regard to her guilt. She could have killed the victim before the reception, as you claim, and then tried to hide his body in the lantern before the event ended. Objection! I don't think so. Sorry, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, where would the body have been hidden during the reception in your scenario? Uh, that's, um... Even you have to admit, Edgy, that this has opened up a new possibility. Do explain yourself right. Alright, I will. If Miss Watt didn't commit the crime in the reception hall, then that means someone, somewhere, put the victim's body into the lantern. Hmm, I suppose that makes sense. A dead body couldn't have put itself in there. Linky, why are you being a pain, man? I suppose that makes sense, yes. Exactly, Your Honor. In other words... Hmm? Gum? Okay. Exactly, Your Honor. In other words, if the murder actually occurred before the reception, it opens up the possibility that he was killed somewhere else. The defendant didn't do it. He was killed some other way. Um... These are our choices to select. Link, just sit in the... Oh, you want to lie down on the couch. Well, he had flower petals on him, right? There was no flower petals in the reception. So maybe he was killed somewhere where there was flowers. I think he was killed somewhere else because he has flower petals all over him. That's not. That doesn't make any sense. If you just wanted the couch set up, buddy, you could just ask the couch to be moved around. Now look at that. You have all your space to lie down. See? Stop being a troublemaker. All right. Um. I think he was killed somewhere else because he had flower petals on him. Okay, that's Amber. What she thinks works for me. Killed somewhere else, says Peter. He was killed somewhere else, says Richard. I'm gonna say killed elsewhere. El else, elsewhere, because it sounds cool. Alright. 
All right, here we go. Killed elsewhere. He was killed somewhere else. Elsewhere. Whatever. Hand slam. If the body was hidden inside the lantern, then it's possible that the body was moved along with it from somewhere else. Hmm. Oh, you're right. Of course I am. You can run that mouth of yours all you want. But do you have any evidence to support what's going on through your head, Mr. Wright? Of course I do. Probably. I think the answer lies in that piece of evidence and in something. Uh, that was left at the crime scene that will point us to where the victim was really killed. Very well, Mr. Wright. In that case, what proves that the lantern and the body would move from somewhere else? Now I think we should present the flower petals. Now present the flower petals? Yeah, because it proves he was killed somewhere else. Okay. There's, there's so, no flowers in the reception hall. Wait, there's no flowers in the well, reception Well, I mean, there hall? are flowers, but they're not the same kind that was all over him. Otis. I think. I mean, I don't see any flowers similar to that. There is the body picture at... Uh... I lost the body. The body hit the floor. Where'd it go? There it is. Ah, you there it is. Okay, it. yeah. It's, it's, it's monotone color. All right. So you want me to present the body again? Yeah, and then... Leave that! Take the flower petals. A photo of the victim again? I like this photo. Yes! I'd like the court to focus on this thing right here. Flower petal! Yay! Flower power! Flower petals, Mr. Wright? That's right. Flower petals. These petals are from the kind of flower that weren't present in the reception hall. This means they must have gotten into the lantern when it was somewhere else. And just where do you propose this somewhere else to be, Mr. Wright? Alright, I propose that this piece of evidence will tell us everything where the flower petals came from. Uh, uh what? What exactly is that? Um... Alright guys, we're almost at the hour mark, let's go! You guys are, uh, kind of below the, uh, like ratio today. Um, well, he must have been killed somewhere, the airship was flying for a long time. Okay. So he must have been killed on somewhere on the airship. What type of evidence supports that it was what? somewhere? Uh, what are the different photos we have of the airship? Do we have any other photos of different rooms? Uh, we have a few photos there. We have right. autopsy. Well, what is that one with the there? hold? The holding area. That's below the, the reception hall. The holding area? I believe that's the hold. Oh. Yeah, look at those those flowers were in the hold area. Yeah. So that's where he must have been killed and then he must have been killed and then put in one of those elephants. I mean, um bulls. Now they're elephants? Okay. I mean, he put them put in one of those um animal things. Booties. Although, okay, Maya had me thinking about elephants cuz she said an elephant could fit in. All right. Good job, guys. Let's try to get to 120 in the next 15-20 uh, minutes to make up for almost an hour to get 100. So, uh, we're gonna try the hold piece. Well, thank you, uh, Basil Siraj. Really appreciate that. Please take a look at the flowers in this picture of the hold. Notice how their petals are, uh, the same shape as the petals in the crime scene photo? Yes, I see them. They do look to be from the some kind of flower. Same kind of flower. Objection. What does that matter, right? Hmm, is this really all you've got? A flower's a flower's a flower. They're all the same. Wouldn't hardly call that you presented compelling evidence. Yes, it is, you big dum-dum. I'm afraid I couldn't disagree with you more, Mr. Edgeworth. Mm. What? This is because you're not cultured. <laughs> I gave a flower of this type to my lovely wife once, and we were very young. So I can assure you that this is a very meaningful and compelling evidence indeed. The soundness of my judgment is what this matter is backed by nothing less than pure love. <laughs> but, your honor. <laughs> Let it go, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear you don't know anything about flowers. Ha <laughs> ha. It's not like you have anyone you could actually give any to anyway, after all. But maybe you should try studying up on them just in case this opportunity presents itself. Oh! <laughs> Oh, this from the man who only knows the names of three types of flowers? <laughs> 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 
That, that's hardly relevant to the case at hand. <laughs> anyway, the defense asserts that it's highly probable that the victim was killed in the hold. If the body was then placed in the lantern and moved to the reception hall for the same reason... <laughs> creepy. It would completely destroy the prosecution's case. Then you mean the body was... Uh That's right. The victim's body was... Inside the lantern during the entire beautiful wedding with... Inside the lantern during the entire beautiful wedding reception. While the defendant and her betrothed were celebrating their love. What? Oh. All right. Fine. Dun -dun -dun. Thank you for being a member for three months, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Hmm. Your smooth talk might work on his honor, but it won't work on me right. Ah, what are you talking about now? Take another look at all the evidence and you'll soon see what I mean. Uh, I wish he would just tell me already. Detective Sky, I'm sure you've already figured out what I'm talking about, correct? Ah, of course, sir. Mr. Wright is the only one here who hasn't. Why don't you leave this one to me, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well. Let's see what you can do now. Um, Detective Sky, please give your testimony to this court, please. Second testimony. Uh, prosecution's rebuttal. Okay. The rebuttal. Yep, we definitely, um, uh, yep, and he... Definitely, we, we... Yeah, we definitely missed you, Rebecca. Thank you for being a member for three months. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. The rebuttal. Re... Whoops, I spelled that wrong. R-E-B-U... Uh... Mm. That's... R-E-B-U-T-T-A-L. See, he settled down. He just wanted his seat back. He's fine. Prosecution's rebuttal. All right, guys and gals, let's keep those likes up. The victim could not have been killed before the reception. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. And that estimated time of death is correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Unless... What if he was in the freezer? What if he was time travel? Yes, if it was in the freezer, it could be different. We've already had a freezer case where they've chilled the body. We also had a case like that in the Spirit of Justice game already because someone was in the snow. Oh, yeah, good. and also they had those kind of cases in the monk show. Yes. Monk. Tossing someone into the freezer. Mm, yep. <laughs> it's clear. Mr. Gloomsbury was killed after the reception. And that completely contradicts your claim. Hmm. I guess so. Tell me you took at least a... Cursory... Uh, cursory glance at the autopsy report, Mr. Wright. It appears you've grown rusty since our last outing. Might I suggest you go back and brush up on the basics? Ha 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 Ah, sure, though I must say, you're as cocky as ever, Mr. Edgeworth. I beg your pardon. Well, what are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? I'm gonna knock your idol down a peg or two. I'm just saying that I'll go back to basics if that's what Mr. Edgeworth wants. I'll prove how badly he underestimated me with a good old-fashioned cross-examination. What? Yes, why not? Very well. Let us see how you put your money where your mouth is, Mr. Wright. Ha ha. Yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Cross examination time. Cross examination again. Victim had been killed before. Hold it. Hold it. All right. You sound pretty certain. You must have some solid grounds for making that claim, right? Mm, of course I do. And you're gonna feel silly when I show you what they are. Ready? Feast your eyes on this. No one knows. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. Hold it! Hold it! Alright, I've read the autopsy report too, you know, because I can read things. Impressive. Then you don't need me to explain it to you, do you, Mr. Wright? 
Now there's no way the victim could have been killed before the reception, I mean. Words say, Detective Sky, that I think you've overlooked something big. Haha. <laughs> I have? Uh, oh yeah, why don't you take another look at the evidence? But I've already looked at all the evidence, and quite carefully too. I'll have you know... Detective Sky, do not be taken in by his verbal antics. He is simply bluffing as always. Uh, right, sir. <laughs> and that estimated time of death is correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Oh, oh, I don't know about that. Is it possible that the culprit did something to obscure the uh, real time of death? No, not in this case. There was no snow or anything to keep the body from decomposing. And there's no fridge on that airship big enough to fit a body into. So, you've already checked into that, I see. It all comes down to the estimated time of death, doesn't it, Nick? Couldn't the killer mess with the victim's time of death by keeping the body on ice? Yeah, if they had the means to. The prosecution is treating the estimated time of death as an absolute. But is it really? Oh, I take it you don't think it is, huh, Nick? In that case, we're going to have to find a way to convince them otherwise. Yeah, there's got to be a way somehow. Dry ice. The victim could not have been killed before the reception. Actually, yeah, dry ice could help. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. And that estimated time of death is correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Mm. Because Emma's putting on her glasses to say it. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Um, well. Mm, yeah, you're, uh, yeah, Luke, you might have a point about the dry ice. Yeah, I just don't know what one to press it on, that's all. Um. I believe the dry ice is important because we tried to use the fog machine before and it didn't work. Alright. That's the made time of death. No way it could be wrong. Um, yeah, try it on this statement. I would present the, uh, fog machine. Oh, yeah, the fog machine uh, uses fog. dry ice. Fog machine. Uh, yoink. Large amounts of dry ice were placed in the fog machine to produce a thick fog during the reception. Okay. All right, we'll give it a try. Okay, so present fog machine. The rebuttal for fog machine. One, two. Fog machine. Here we go. Ba boom. No, oh, the music stopped. You're in trouble now, Emma. I admit that the estimated time of death does contradict my theory. Finally! And that means your theory that the victim was killed before the reception... ...is still entirely plausible. Uh, uh, what? What makes you think that? Alright, the killer could have falsified the time of death by using a certain item in the reception hall. Please take a look at this. And what is this contraption, Mr. Wright? It's a fog machine, Your Honor, used to create a special romantic atmosphere in the hall. And this machine could have been used to falsify the time of death? Yeah, Your Honor, because this machine uses dry ice to perform its magic. Dry ice? Ah, yes! The super cold stuff commonly used to make theatrical fog, right? I see. So your claim is that this dry ice was used to keep the body cold and chill. Hmm. Oh, in that case, I guess the victim could have been killed before the reception. Aha! Uh -huh. Could have been put him in the fog machine. Hold on! Order in this court! There will be no mumbling. Only I get to mumble. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this development? Hmm. That the victim was killed in the hold before the wedding reception? The prosecution acknowledges the possibility of this claim. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere! The prosecution would also like to thank you, Mr. Wright. Ah? Uh, for what? I didn't know how certain piece of evidence fit into this case. But now, thanks to you, I do. What piece of evidence? To get into the hold only needs a key card like this one. And here we have a record of those who entered the hold with such key cards. 
Unless somebody stole a key card. The times aren't specified, but these are the three entries of the day of the murder. And as you can see, the last person to enter the hole that day was the defendant. What? So, uh, the one who moved the body out of the hold must have been... That's right. It was none other than the defendant, the bride. Oh. Yeah, but in the picture of the hold, there's tons of maids in there. Uh-huh. They didn't have a key card. Also, she didn't have a key card. Her key card was back at the house. I believe. Oh, weird. I mean, we found it back at the house. Take a look at this entry record. There are a couple of other names on here besides Ellen's. Hey, you're right. According to the uh, record entry, Mr. Edgeworth, Pierce Nickabody, or whatever his name is, Pierce had also gone into the hold. Isn't it possible that he could have been the culprit? Objection. Sorry, but Mr. Pierce was escorting a few of the guests at the time. I'm sure they would be happy to testify to the fact if you would like. Think me cocky all you like, Mr. Wright, but my confidence is rarely misplaced. Ah! Now then, it's probably safe to assume that after the killing of the victim in the hold, the defendant moved the body into the hall in order to sp dispose of it discreetly. Uh, what do you mean by discreetly? The defendant volunteered to take care of the reception's cleanup personally. That means she would have had the chance to dispose of anything in oh, any way she wanted. Including taking the lantern off the airship without raising any suspicion. Don't tell me you didn't know about Miss Watts volunteering for cleanup duty, Mr. Wright. For my last task as a servant of the Sprocket household, I offer to take on the preparation and cleanup of the re reception banquet. I see. Uh -oh. Why would she do that on her honeymoon? Yeah. Look at you, sweating buckets like a rookie, even after all these years. Nevertheless, thank you for proving that the only person who could have killed the victim in the hold is... Ellen Watt. Gah! Great job, Phoenix. Now we're back to square one again. Oops. Perhaps you should ask Miss Sykes for some help in reviewing the defense for dummies. <laughs> Way to go, sir. You've got Mr. Wright in a cold sweat. I wonder if maybe the promise of seeing that miserable look on your face is what brought me back to court today. It certainly made all my stress and woes as chief prosecutor just melt away. I guess he had a lot of stress built up. I'll give him some to stress over before we're through today. Your Honor, the prosecution asks that you render your verdict at this time. Before that man over there tries to throw the court into chaos with his meaningless bluffs. My she, Mr. Wright, are there any last meaningful bluffs you would like to present to this court? Uh, why does he have to assume it'll be a bluff? <laughs> Nick, hurry up and throw a good bluff out there. Come on. I will, I will. <laughs> all right, we're dragging this out. Uh, well, all right then, let's see. I've got it! How do you know if it was Miss Watt who used her key card? After all, it turns out that somebody else used her key card. It would mean Miss Watts didn't do it! Interesting. And you're able to prove this bluff to be true? I assure you I'm not bluffing, Your Honor. <laughs> now what? Uh, let's see. Wait a minute, Nick! I can think of a certain someone who might have used Ellen's key card. You can? Remember? The one who was sneaking around the hold in spite of not being a family member. Oh, no. Oh, that's right. Your Honor, the defense would like to call a certain witness to the stand. I need the testimony of this person who may have entered the hold with Miss Watt's key card. Wow. Larry Butts, wow. Really? We're gonna get our friend in trouble. Oh, poor Larry. I'm gonna uh, grab an ad phone. No problem. 109.40. Larry Butts. Oh yeah, we're dragging Larry into this. Alright, here we go. Take that! That's 
your witness? Ugh, are you saying that numbskull was on the airship? He never breathed a word about that to me. Yeah, that's not surprising because Mr. Uh, Nickabody, I told him to keep quiet about it. But Mr. Butts himself admitted it to me. He claimed to have found a way to sneak into the Flying Chapel's hold to see Miss Watt, who he was enamored with. This photo he took and gave to me is proof. Then, was it he who moved the lantern with the body inside to the reception hall? Uh, you know as well as I that with him, anything is possible. And he's uh, the one possibility we should definitely look into. I can't believe this. What in the world is he doing mixed up in this? Come on, Edgy. Remember what we've been saying since elementary school? When something smells, it's usually the butts. That's right, exactly. Oh, that Larry, he'll pay for this. Well, if you want to extract your payment now, <laughs> he's right up there in the gallery. Yikes! <laughs> Bailiff, seize the witness before he makes a run for it like he usually does. No! Why does this stuff always happen to me? Sorry, Larry, but you brought this on yourself, fool. Let's break for a 15-minute recess. I ask that both sides prepare for the next witness testimony done this time. I'm gonna call my wife. All right, we're on a break. September 22nd, District Courtroom, Defendant Lobby, number three. Maya. Wow, been a while since I've had this much fun and excitement. Face off against Mr. Edgeworth, harrowing tightrope walk for the defense. Phew, I'm exhausted already. Boss? Probably Boss! Athena. There she is. I'm here for moral support! Hey, Athena. Are you all done practicing for Trucy's magic show? Well, to be perfectly honest, I sort of ran away. That's because she was putting my life in danger, I tell you! I see. I think I'll need to have a one-on-one -on -one with her later. You're really uh, athletic and fit, Athena, so Trucy probably thinks you can run, run you ragged. That may be true, which is why not even Trucy can keep up with me when I run at full speed. No, oh, that's, that's Looks like Trucy. you spoke too soon, Athena! Never underestimate the resourcefulness of a great magician! Oh, look, her pendant is also shocked. Huh? <laughs> oh, no. Magical girl Trucy Wright is on the scene! N no! Now, Athena, it's time to practice human combustion magic! Go on! Douse yourself in gasoline! Don't worry, it's a magic drink after all, so it's perfectly safe! Oh my god. Run away! Hey, you, you're not getting off that easily! Okay, that is horrible. I shouldn't have even repeated that line. That's pretty terrifying. Never ever. do that ever to yourself. Oh my gosh. Haha! -ha, they get along so well, don't they? Mm, it reminds me of the good old days, huh? You, me, and Pearly. Oh, and Detective Gumshoe. Can't forget him. We all had kind of fun at the crime scene back then, remember? Leaving me to do all the serious investigating, as I recall. Court will be back in session, Mr. Wright. Ah, thank you, Bailiff. So, Larry is the next witness, right? I can't wait to see what happens. Sadly, I can already imagine it. All right, um, guys and gals, we're going to have to push the YouTube short that went up this morning. Um, so, mods, we're going to need assistance with that. Um, I'm putting the link in now. So, guys, if you haven't seen the YouTube short today, there was no notifications for it. So, we're going to present it. Uh, basically, if you guys could watch the short while you watch the trial every once in a while, um, clicking the link actually counts as a new view. So, you actually do not need to refresh the short. But um, we are in pretty bad shape right now. Yeah, and uh, to to translate, basically YouTube keeps taking our views, so we're just gonna be pushing that 
short of, uh, as much as we can. Yep. Um, yeah, and if you guys want to leave a comment over on the short too, it's it's fine. Um, and yeah, so every time you click the link, it counts as a new view. We're going to try to push the views of the short as well as do the live stream at the same time because they are bleeding our views. It's not really common for us to be at almost 900 views an hour uh, at the uh, 5 o'clock mark. Or yeah, 5, 6 o'clock. This is not normal. This is like the opposite of normal. It's pretty stressful. Okay, back to the courtroom we go. Uh, Larry, 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 Larry. Court will now reconvene. Yeah. Nick! Edgy! The two of you are gonna hang me out to dry, aren't you? No, not the both of us. Just Mr. Wright. Nick! How could you? I don't really think he did it, of course, but I've got to use whatever leads I can. Hey, Mr. Butts, there's a possibility you moved the lantern that had the dead body in it. So if you want to clear yourself of any suspicion, you'll have to testify. Now then, you're the testimony if you please, witness. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for the help, Crossfighter. Appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. And I wish we had some other mods on to help out, but I guess we just have Crossfighter. So thank you for being your Crossfighter to help us out with the stream. Really appreciate that yeah, so we, much. Thank you. We have other mods that show up like uh, different times of day. So mm -hmm. uh, Nick is a jerk face. Nick, you big fat stinking jerk! How can you doubt your best bud? We've known each other since elementary school! Like, we... Uh, well, get this, pal. Our friendship is over! Wow. That's your testimony. That's his testimony. Um. That your friendship is over. That's a terrible testimony. Um, what? Hmm... No one else is going to say it? Well, go ahead, Mr. Knight. He's all yours. Why me? You're the one who called him to the stand, so he's your responsibility. Oh, thanks, old chum. Can any of you show me a little respect, even just a shred? You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Knight. I would if there was any testimony to cross-examine. Eh, he just said our friendship is over. Yeah, I mean, he's a... Uh, yeah. That's the testimony. Yep, that's the testimony. Nick is a jerk face. Nick, you big fat stinking jerk! Hold it! That's not testimony. Come on, Larry, can't you please give me something real to work with? Don't think I know about your tricks. If I say something careless, you're gonna shove some evidence at me with a loud voice. Objection! It's Mooper smug look on your face. Yeah, well, that is my job. Now I get found guilty, how are you gonna take responsibility for what you've done? Why should I take responsibility for just doing my job? You heartless jerk! Don't you have any compassion for me? Yep, thank you, Mage Wolf and Crossfighter, for helping with the short. Appreciate that so much. How can you doubt your best bud in the whole wide world? Hold it! I thought that was Edgeworth. Sorry, Mr. Butts, but it wasn't Miss Watts that entered the hold with that key card. Then you're the most likely suspect. Nick! Are you seriously doubting the innocence of our old childhood friend? Uh, well, technically, yes. But it isn't personal, I assure you. Oh! <laughs> wow. A true friend would believe me no matter what. Why can't you see my tears? Don't they mean anything to you? Nicky! Oh, you don't really think you can cry your way out of this, do you? Okay, fine! If that's the case. Hey, we, 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 get this, pal. Our friendship's over! Hold it! Larry, listen to me. Shut up, shut up! I'm not talking to you anymore! Nah, this is getting us nowhere. <sighs> Come off it, Air. Oh. Come off it, Larry. Huh? If you don't quit fooling around and start testifying, Miss Watts will be found guilty. For real? If no new information comes out of this cross examination, then yes, Mr. Butts, for the real. Not that I would have a problem with that myself. 
Uh, Larry, just tell us the truth already. Did you or didn't you go into the hold and move a lantern up to the reception hall? I... I never moved any bull lantern, I tell you! Bull lantern? What? Did I just say something weird? You told me that you didn't attend the wedding reception. Can you believe they told me only family and relatives could attend? They wouldn't even let me into the reception hall. <laughs> yeah, so what? Then that's odd. No one in this courtroom ever mentioned the sex of the lantern that was moved. So how could you know that it was a bull lantern? Uh, you didn't even have to actually go to the reception hall to know that. Anyone can tell there were two Pega Bulls by looking at the Flying Chapel's pamphlet! All I can tell right now is there's a strong scent of bull in the air here. Please add that last statement to your testimony, Mr. Butts. Anyone could tell there were two Pega Bulls by looking at the Chapel's pamphlet! Um, but doesn't the Chapel pamphlet say that there was a cow and a... Wait, where is it? Yeah, peg a cow and peg a bull. Uh-huh. Objection! Objection! I want you to take a good close look at this, Mr. Butts. Because unfortunately for you, the pamphlet clearly shows a peg a cow and a peg a bull in their example. Diagram of the reception hall. Huh? But on that day, instead of putting a peg a cow and a peg a bull out for the bride and groom, there were two male Pegabulls on display. Uh, yet somehow, you knew there were two Pegabulls in the reception hall that day. There's only one way you could know something like that, Larry. It was you who moved the Pegabull to the reception hall, wasn't it? Ah! No! Larry, you didn't? Mr. Butch, did you move the lantern containing the victim's body to the reception hall? Hey, that's what it looks like. <laughs> what? Yeah, Larry's in trouble again. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Wow, we're getting a lot of Phoenix music lately. Wait, Nick! Why don't you think... You don't think I'm the murderer, do ya? Maybe you and Mr. Gloomsbury were fighting over Miss Watt, and you ended up killing him? Why, uh, not you too? <laughs> Look, I did, I did sneak into the reception, but that's as far as it went. You know me, I wouldn't hurt a fly! You snuck into the reception? Yeah, sure, but some sprocket men caught and locked me up in one of the cabins. It was pretty awful, actually. But that's when I made the drawing of the pterodactyl I showed you, Nick. Ixnay on the pterodactyl, Larry! <laughs> Mr. Wright, not even you could take this farce that far, would you? Uh, we are talking about Larry. What do I do? Do I accuse Larry of being a true culprit? Um, um I don't know. Let's see, do we accuse Larry? I mean, it's Larry. Um, I don't think we should accuse him, no. If it smells, it's usually the butts. I don't think we should accuse Larry. I don't think he did anything wrong. Yeah. I think we should just get more information from him for the case. Accuse? Don't accuse. Don't accuse him. Everyone's saying no, 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 no. Okay. No, you're right, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Butts didn't have a reason to kill Mr. Gloomsbury. <laughs> Ow. He might have had an imaginary reason to kill Soren Sprocket, sure, but not Mr. Gloomsbury. After all, he did steal Mr. Sprocket's bride and try to elope with her. Just because I tried to steal somebody's bride doesn't make me a murderer. I believe you, Larry, and I don't think you killed anybody either. You would never do anything like that. Nick, old buddy, old pal! I knew you'd come through for me. 
Funny that, considering your sworn testimony just now that we were through. Mr. Butts, it's time you told this court the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You understand? No more of your antics. Witness testimony. He's going to talk about the pterodactyl, isn't he? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh... Well, I mean, you're the one who brought him to the stand. Yep. Um, guys, take this time to watch the short if you haven't already. There's about 70 of you guys here. You could really pile onto the short for just a brief uh, 30 seconds and come back to the stream. Um, next thing is called Moving the Lantern. Um, Moving the Lantern. <laughs> Where is the short? I can tell if the short's being watched, too. Um, what was it called? What was we today's short? We are leaving short? now. We are leaving now was the name of the short? All right, good. There's uh, actually 60 people watching the short right now. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It all adds up. Even just a little bit of views like piles on to the actual hourly view counter, so we appreciate that. You watch it 20 times? That's fine. You can watch it as many times as you want. It's a, you know, as long as you guys click the link, it's a new view. Mm. Um, shorts work the way that YouTube views used to uh, 10 years ago. Which is how channels with, you know, under 100,000 subscribers could get millions of views. Anyway, moving the lantern. Hey, it's just like Nick said. I'm the one who moved the lantern. Okay. I was poking around the reception hall before the main event and saw a lantern was broken. There was a note on it that said, Exchange with the one in the hole, Ellen. So I decided to do Ellie a favor. <laughs> okay. So you switched the lanterns before the reception, did you? Then that means the victim was already killed before the reception. Yep. Isn't that what we've been saying this entire time? <laughs> it would appear that Mr. Butts completely fell for the defendant's scheme. Scheme? What scheme? This note from the defendant exchanged with the one in the hold, Ellen. Mr. Butts moved the lantern with the body in it up to the reception hall because of this note. And thus he has become a suspect in Mr. Gloomsbury's murder. Gulp! Like, wait a second! I did feel pretty heavy. But I, like, never thought that it was a dead body in it. Wow. Uh, what was a note like that doing on the lantern in the first place? Hold it! You've got it all wrong, Mr. Edgeworth! I left that note for myself! It was simply a reminder because I can be very forgetful! Oh, no. Objection! Objection. What sorry excuse, Miss Watt? The prosecution contends that this note shows one facet of defendant's murderous plan. And you, Mr. Butts, you played right into Mr. Wa Miss Watts' hands. No way, Edgy! I don't believe it! Objection! Hang on. You do still really believe Miss Watts to be the culprit, huh, Edgy? Hmm, of course. My stance on the matter remains unchanged. If you think I'm wrong, then prove it with your cross-examination. Gladly. Very well, Mr. Knight. You may cross-examine the crazy witness. Even though the short is over a thousand views, for some reason they're not counting that for the channel. Yep. It's not helping the channel, so we just have to get more more views on the short. I'm sorry, guys. YouTube is just being really sus today. They're just yeah, taking just, our just views. Just so you guys know, a thousand views helps hourly, like, of the channel for the whole day. But, like, we don't actually make any money on shorts. Shorts CPM is, like, non-existent. It's like TikTok. You would have to get millions of views on a short in order to get paid. Like, that's just how it is. Uh, I think that if you get, like, 10,000 views, you make a penny or something like that. So, I mean, it's YouTube shorts are just... Um, YouTube has a higher CPM than TikTok, so when they bring TikTokers over that average millions of views, they're making more money over here.
but everybody other, uh, everybody else who does a you know a short it's just kind of to help your hourly views it doesn't really do anything other than that um, but that's why we do two shorts a day is because it it helps our you know overall grand total and we need our grand total moving the lantern this is the cross examination right yes yeah i think so okay but it's just like nick said i'm like the one who moved the lantern i keep forgetting how larry used to sound why don't you tell us sooner you idiot because i knew you guys were gonna be suspicious of me that's why we're suspicious of you now because you tried to hide it! Mm. My thoughts exactly. Huh. Well, now I've told you, Happy. So now how about letting me go? No, not yet. You need to stick around to sort a few things out. Uh, fine! Larry always put me through my paces because the problem with Larry is he keeps changing his way that he speaks. Yeah. Yeah, I was poking around the reception hall before the main event and saw a lantern that was busted. Hold it. The lantern you swapped out was a female pegamu, a pegacow, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Why did you replace a female lantern with a male one? Because I was too busy trying to get not caught. I didn't have time to check for little details like that, yeah. You didn't want to get caught. You could have just left well enough alone, you know. Whatever! Anyway, when I uh, took a look at the broken lantern, I saw... There was a note, and it said exchange with the one in the hole. Hold it. All right. That note wasn't addressed to you, was it? Well, I guess not, but... How could I let my dear sweet Ellie do all that hard physical labor on her own? <laughs> Precisely what I thought process that constantly gets you in trouble, Larry. Mm. Besides, it was my big chance to show her how I cared about her. Yeah, by messing up her life. So I decided to do Ellie a favor. Hold it. All right. Nobody saw you the whole time while you were switching the lanterns. Nope. I didn't get caught either. Not that time, anyway. Not that time? Yeah. When I tried to, like, sneak into the reception hall the first time... I didn't have much luck. Those sprocket guys spotted me and nabbed me. All of my words are failing me right now. Pretty exciting, don't you think? Larry, you need help. And then they locked me up in that cabin. Nick, what are you asking about stuff like this for anyway? Shouldn't you be trying to prove Ellie's innocent? Well, it's that statement of his is important to the case. Uh... Um... Probably. It's important. Uh... <sighs> He didn't get caught moving the lantern. Mm. What statement was it? The one where he said he didn't get caught? Um, somebody says it is important, so I'm gonna go with my chat gut, which the chat says it is important. So it is important going once, it is important going twice. Boom! Mr. Butt's trying to cash the. Oh, pff, wow. Like I said, guys, I'm uh, having problems seeing. Everything's kind of blurry, even with my glasses on, so mistakes are gonna happen. Mr. Butt's trying to crash the reception and subsequently getting locked up in a cabin. I believe there might be an important fact in this case, Your Honor. All right then, very well. Mr. Butts, please add that statement to your testimony. I tried to sneak into the reception hall, but I got caught and locked up in a cabin. Hold it. So you got locked up, then what happened? I broke out. Then I started looking for Ellie, and I wandered into the reception hall again. That's when I saw the broken lantern and replaced it. <laughs> Even after they caught you and locked you up, you still went looking for Miss Watt? <laughs> but hold on a minute. What is it, Nick? 
Maya, doesn't something seem weird to you? The music stopped. Larry's saying he replaced the lantern after he broke out of the cabin. That's right. Oh, wait, huh? You're right. That doesn't make much sense, does it? All right then, Mr. Knight. Have you found an inconsistency in the witness's statement? I have, Your Honor. Yes, I believe so. Mr. Butts moved the lantern after he broke out of the cabin, but that contradicts with this. Uh, what does it contradict with? Hmm. He moved the lantern after he broke out of the cabin. I have no idea what it contradicts with. Alright, what is the... Um... Um, do we have a lantern uh, somewhere in our evidence? Oh, you mean the broken lantern with the dead body? The lantern in which the victim's body was found. Alright, so you want um, me to... I think we should bluff and try that. I don't know. You want me to present the busted lantern? I think so. Okay. I don't know why, though. I'm just kind of bluffing. Move the lantern. After he broke out of the cabin, but that contradicts with this. He moved the lantern after he broke out of the cabin. I don't know, but I would present the lantern. That's that's my guess. Okay, here we go. Take that! Is that? Yeah, it's the broken lantern, Your Honor. Mr. Butts, what you're saying doesn't make any sense at all. What? Why not? You swapped the lanterns before the reception began, right? Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? But you also said that you swapped the lanterns. After you got locked up in a cabin for trying to sneak into the reception. In other words, you're saying you swapped the lanterns before the reception. Wait. In other words, you're saying you swapped the lanterns both before the reception and after the reception took place. Hmm, that certainly doesn't make any sense, does it? Mr. Butch, did you swap the lanterns before or after the reception? Um... Which was it, before or after? There's a world of difference between the two. Well, Mr. Butts? Uh... I guess I can't expect you guys to, like, understand. In a nutshell, it was both before and after the reception. What? What? I tried to sneak into the first reception and got locked out. Locked up. First reception? Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. Then, through the power of Ellie's pendant, time got rewound, and we went back to the time before the reception. It was after that that I replaced the lantern. So it was both before the reception and after the reception. Get it? Oh, so he went back in time also. We went back in time to before the reception. So of course the reception would take place one more time after that, right? That's why I said it makes perfect sense. Um. Mr. Wright, what in the world is a witness talking about? Has he developed some sort of intellectual ailment I'm not aware of since I last saw him? Uh, um, well... None of the sprockets seem to remember the time skip, but I do. And Ellie remembers it too. I think the power of our love for each other made that miracle happen. <laughs> Mr. Knight, I'm sorry, but, um... Will you please translate this man's gibberish so the rest of us can understand? So now I have to be the one to explain about the whole time travel thing? Go on, Nick. I know you can do it, buddy. Looks like you don't have much of a choice, Nick. Oh, no. To heck with it. I can't lose any more of my dignity today anyway. The defendant, Miss Ellen Watt, has told the defense the following strange story. She said that after the reception ended, she was attacked by Mr. Gloomsbury. She claims that as she was being assaulted, she made a wish upon her pendant. Please take me back, back to that blissful moment. In doing so...
Time apparently rewound itself to just before the reception began. I'm sorry, what? I know it's hard to believe, but think about it this way. <laughs> Through the power of the pennant, both Ellen and Watt and Larry Butts experience time travel. <laughs> Nani? Um. Objection. What absolute rubbish. Mr. Wright, I've heard my fair share of your nonsense over the years, but this takes the cake. Have you thoroughly lost your mind? Yes! But this is simply the conclusion I came to. Using that logic uh, ability you love so much. <laughs> what? The truth of the matter is, the future president of Sprocket Aviation, Soren Sprocket, has been researching time machines. So, what if a time machine has already been successfully created? And what if it's one of the Sprockets Aviation's top secret inventions? Wow. A time machine? Yeah! I even saw something while we were time traveling. Oh no. I saw a pterodactyl <laughs> flying through the sky! Maybe the airship was set to travel through time for their honeymoon trip. What? A pterodactyl now? Oh no. <laughs> you can't possibly have any evidence to back up your ridiculous time travel story. Mm. Well, I, uh... <laughs> now we come back to rational thinking, as I thought. In any case, I now have the evidence to prove that you're no more intelligent than Larry. Not so fast, Edgy. I'm not the same old Larry you used to know. What? Oh. You want evidence? I got your evidence right here. There's a photo I secretly took of the first reception. What? Uh, what? What? So he took a photo of the first reception. Larry, I can't believe... Wait. Well, anyway, good job. Mm. If we compare the photos of the first and section... Re yeah, sorry. If we compare the photos of the first and second receptions and can find a difference, then there will be a, wow, we'll be able to prove that the reception was held twice. What do you really well yeah. What do you really think such a difference exists? You really think such a difference exists? I do, Your Honor. I probably. I just uh need some time to find it for you. This is ah. Oh. This is preposterous! Very well, please show the court what's different then. Uh, this is a proof positive that the wedding reception was held twice. Um, what's the proof? Mm. Oh, can we look at the other one or no? We have two wedding photos, right? The oh flowers God. are different! Yeah, the the bouquet is completely different color. The bouquet switched. Oh my gosh. That's weird. The flowers changed. So I guess she did go through time. I guess so. Um, 143. The flowers changed. The flowers says pop star, pop. The bouquet says Rick. All right, here we go. The bouquet says Ovage. The flower says Brandon. We'll put we'll put flowers. Flowers says Jessica. Please direct your attention to Miss Watts' bouquet of flowers. In the photo of her one in-laws took, the defendant is holding a yellow bouquet, and her face looks weird. Yeah, it does. But in the photo Mr. Butts took, she is holding a red bouquet. You're right! That's impossible! What does this mean? Am I losing my marbles? It means that the defendant really did experience two wedding receptions. And she did that when she traveled back through time! 
No knee! Maybe the Truman showed it. They pretended like they went back in time, but in reality... Uh, they staged the whole time travel bit? Just for her. Okay. Just so they could frame her for murder. And make her seem crazy. Like, maybe the entire family... They said the entire family was against her. Maybe the entire family staged a second one. Nope. When they heard her wish to go back in time, maybe they knocked her out and did the entire thing over again. That's weird. All right. I don't know. My, uh... Nick! You did it! You proved Ellen's time travel story to be true! Uh, yeah, I can hardly believe it myself. <laughs> it's just as Ellen said, the reception was held twice. This turns uh, every assumption we base this trial on upside down. Objection. No, it doesn't. Just proves they had two receptions. I refuse to accept such ludicrous argument. It is pure fiction under the guise of pseudoscience at best. There is simply no such thing as time travel. I know it's hard, but can't you suspend your disbelief for one nanosecond, Edgeworth? I bet sci-fi movies push all your buttons on the wrong way. Don't they, Mr. Edgeworth? I can totally picture you yelling, That would never happen every five seconds at the screen in a sci-fi movie! Maybe you should stay away from movie dates altogether! That's neither here nor there! <laughs> this is real life we're talking about! But the proof is clearly shown in the two photographs. That's right, Mr. Edgeworth, no matter how in this... I'm not done speaking right. Fine. I'll entertain your absurd delusion. If only to demolish it before your very eyes. What? Let's start with this then, shall we? There is one thing your time travel theory fails to explain. And that is the memories the other guests there. The defendant and Larry remember the reception occurring twice, but no member of the Sprocket family has even mentioned such a thing. That's because the time machine is classified technology. I'm not done, you bird brain. Yeah, bird brain! As I was saying, if the entire family had been sworn to secrecy, then why didn't they sworn the woman who was marrying into the family to secrecy too? That's a good point. Honestly, all it takes is a little common sense, Mr. Wright. Mm, even still, how do we know that the trip through time did not occur? There is proof in the photos that it did. And besides, if time travel doesn't exist, well, I'd be really disappointed, frankly. I was hoping to go back to the days of my youth. You mustn't allow yourself to be taken in by Mr. Wright's whimsical tales, Your Honor. I've read about it in various literature, you see. And they all say that time travel is not just logically feasible. Hmm, maybe our argument was just a little too nonsensical, Nick. Well, in that case... Why don't we put common sense to the test? Excuse me... The wedding reception was held twice. The photos are proof of that. But it wasn't because of... If it wasn't because of time travel, it's simply because the reception actually had been held twice. Isn't that the most reasonable way to interpret the situation? Hmm. Would you care to elaborate, Mr. Wright? If time travel doesn't exist, then there's only one way to make sense of what happened. Somebody must have orchestrated this strange phenomenon. And that strange someone is... Uh... The gods. Everyone at the reception, Mr. Gloomsbury. Uh, I think it's uh, the Truman Show thing. I think everyone was in on it but her. Wow. They completely staged the entire thing because they were trying to get her to not marry their son. Everyone in on it. What do you guys think? Gloomsbury, the gods, or everyone at the reception? I don't want to see what the gods statement is. Alright, let's, uh, let's save, because I want to see how he explains that the gods did it. Whoops, I didn't save. Alright, here we go. The gods did it. 
Phoenix getting all serious. Such a mysterious phenomenon could only have been caused by... THE GODS THEMSELVES! Mm, what? I suppose the gods would be able to rewind time, yes! <laughs> or to make the wedding reception happen twice, wouldn't they? <laughs> Indeed they would, your honor. In that case, Mr. Knight... Please bring these gods here to testify before this court! Amaya, do you think you could? Not a chance! On behalf of the gods who can't be here today, please have some divine punishment! Oops. I knew I was reaching with that one! Whoops. Oh, that was fun. Ah, uh, okay. It's like it never happened. Everyone at the reception. What if all the guests at the reception conspire together to hold the reception twice and keep quiet about it? What? And for what purpose would they conspire to do such a thing right? Well, uh... Um... Uh... So they could get Ellie not to marry that guy. They all hated her. Someone's clapping. <laughs> Brilliant deduction defense. Wow. I can tell that you are not a renowned lawyer for nothing. I must say I underestimated you. How so, Mr. Nickabody? You've managed to name each event precisely as they happened. You have revealed it all to the light of day. Then, uh, that means... It was us. We orchestrated the whole thing. Yes, the reception was held twice. But not because of time travel, no. We simply held it a second time. What? Why? Why would you do such a thing? To make it as though the murder Miss Ellen committed never happened. N Master Soren figured that if Miss Ellen would kill Gloomsbury after the first reception, experience the reception one more time, she would think it was all a dream. It was he who ordered us to make it happen. However, only a few, including myself, knew of Miss Ellen's crime. Are you saying most of the guests intended two receptions without knowing why? Indeed. They in needed no reason. Master Soren told them to do it, and so they did. That is the Sprocket way. Then who hid the body in the lantern? We did. But we did not anticipate the petals finding their way in for none, nor the actions of Mr. Butts. And that is how you intended to cover the whole situation up? Okay, I'm gonna have to switch them up. The butler's gonna have to be uh -huh. Michael Caine. <laughs> we are having a contest of English accents here! I can't do it! One of them's gonna have to have- one of them's gonna have to be Michael Caine. I Which can't- Which one is the more English? Uh... They can't both sound the same dialect. Mm. Alright, here we go. Cause well, the... Edgeworth should be his normal- Yeah, thing. Edgeworth needs to be prim and proper. The other guy needs to the other, the other guy needs to be more butlerish. Okay, He's Michael here we go. Caine. He's Michael Caine, okay. <clears throat> There is just one thing everyone here has wrong. <laughs> the real scene of the murder was not the hold, it was the vista deck. What? Then uh, Miss Watt's recollection of the events must be correct. I admit we tried to cover this incident up, but the <laughs> fact that Miss Ellen killed Groomsbury is undeniable. This is quite a turn of events. Now I'm doing Scottish! <laughs> Could have made the bowler Irish. All right, Amber, you go for it. Laugh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so it appears we've arrived at the truth at last. Now, now, now! Please do feel free to travel back in time, Mister Wright, and attempt to do this trial over again. Go on. Let's not get hasty, Edgeworth. I bet you can't do it! I bet I can't either! Your Honor, we will have to hold a separate trial for the cover-up conspiracy later. But as far as this case goes, I... What was that? Oh, like a that sounded firearm. like a That sounded like a firearm. Okay. I believe we are ready for the ruling. Mm, 
but I like the time travel. Objection! Hold on one second. Just before the defendant lost consciousness during her attack, she said she saw someone strike the victim. It is possible that the third party is the true culprit. Objection! You still want us to believe the defendant's words. Perhaps you've lost more than your touch during the time abroad. This third person nonsense is nothing but rubbish, and you know it. Objection! But at the same token, how can we trust those who conspired and lied to fool this court of law? For all we know, they might be still hiding something. Ugh. You never know when to quit, do you? Five foot one, now, now, boys. Calm down, both of you, or I'll pull this card over immediately. In any case, there isn't enough trustworthy information yet for me to render a verdict anyway. I suggest we continue the trial after both sides have investigated the matter further. Hmm. Very well, Your Honor. Phew, that was close. Mr. Nickerbody, as for you and your cohorts attempt to cover up this crime, your case will be brought to a separate trial following the resolution of this current one. Understood, Your Honor. <laughs> well then, this concludes today's trial. Court is adjourned. Well, that was a crazy one. Only one for the books. Mm, thank you for the highlighted message, Ostendo Switch. To be continued. Oof! Um, Ostendo Switch says, um... Um, let's see here. Oh my gosh. What is... Um, we had a highlighted message. Okay. I can't see it very well. Okay, thank you, Ostendo Switch, for the highlighted message. Thank you for being a member for 15 months. This Edgeworth, you're talking to a spirit medium, and there are canically ghosts in Ace Attorney Universe. But time travel is so hard to believe. Yeah, exactly. Has There's... Edgeworth ever witnessed the spirit medium stuff? Mm. Oh, wait, yes, he did. Wait. Uh, He was in um Karine, wasn't he? Has Edgeworth ever seen Maya, like, channel somebody? Oh. Or Pearl? Alright, thank you so much, Ostendo Switch. Thank you for being a member for 15 months. It's a year and three months. You're breathtaking, Ostendo. Thank you for helping greatly to support the channel. Thank you so much. People are saying, yes, Edgy has seen, he's seen it. Okay. If you guys say so, I will believe you. You remember this game more than I do. All right, here we go. Write anything agency, 1.48 p.m. Uh, Athena. What? So the whole time tra time traveling thing was just a ruse put on by the guests at the reception. Looks like it. I knew there had to be some kind of trick to it. Wow, two wedding receptions. Can you imagine? I wonder how much that must have cost them. I have no idea. But if you have to ask, you're not rich enough to want to know, so don't bother. Still, if you've gotten enough money, it's a pretty good way to cover things up if you ask me. So wait, she's already technically married then. Like, if they already had the reception once and they exchanged vows and did all that other stuff, yeah, then the wedding ceremony married. is already... She's technically married twice, then. Yeah, they got married twice. They renewed their vows already. Yeah. Still, if you've got the money, it's a pretty good way to cover things up, if you ask me. You got that right! I'm sure I would have been completely fooled! Hi, I'm back! Hey, Maya. Are you all set to go? Yep. Ready to go when you are, Nick! So, uh, should we start? What should we start with? Let's start with reviewing what we learned about the trial first. What Ellen thought was time travel was really just a performance put on by the Sprockets, like the Truman Show. Hmm. But other than that, it seems like uh, Ellen told us was actually all true. So, what really matters right now is the identity of the mystery person Ellen said she saw when she was being attacked. So what is, who is the mystery person? That's the million dollar question, I'm afraid. But if we want to clear Ellen of any suspicion, then figuring out who they are is key. I think I'll take toilets for 200 instead, Mr. Wright. 
Wow, YouTube is throwing a lot of ads. Luckily, I can cancel them. Well, at least there's uh, only so many people on that airship that night, so... And we know who the mastermind of the whole cover-up plot was, so that's good. You mean the groom? Soren Sprocket, right? Exactly. He might know something that could help us out. Uh, I don't know. So what am I doing here? Oh, jeez, Larry. I'm a very busy man, you know, Nick. Well, all the other people involved are Soren's family members, so I thought I'd better start by interviewing you. Even if probably should have just trust a word. Wow. Even I, even if I probably shouldn't trust a word out of your mouth. Oh man. Mm. I have a really tight schedule, but oh heck, we're friends for real, right? Okay, pal, go ahead. Ask me anything. Uh, do you remember it was you who came for me for help in the first place, right? Talk to Larry. The incident. Ouch. Um, I want to go over exactly what happened when before I... S I want to go over what... No, oh, wow. I want to go over exactly what happened when before I step outside this office again. Since you were there, Larry, do you think you could help me get it all straight in my head? If I gotta... Okay, so the first reception was held at 7 p.m. on the day of the incident. Hmm. That's the one you tried to crash, right? Huh? Yeah, that's right. And then they locked me up in a cabin. It was awful, I tell you. Too bad we're not here to uh, focus on you, though, Larry. Yeah, exactly. And then the incident occurred after uh, this first reception at 10 p.m. Ellen was attacked in the reception hall by Gloomsbury. He forced her onto the Vista deck and was about to kill her. No, oh, that's weird. But Ellie fought back and ended up killing old Gloomsbury instead. To cover it up, the family quickly threw together a second reception. That's what Edgy is claiming, anyway. But I know my Ellie didn't do it. The key point here is the mystery person Ellen said she saw strike Gloomsbury just before she passed out. Did you see anybody suspicious uh, sulk skulking around the say? Ah, skulking around that day. Nope, not a soul. Because I was locked up in a cabin that time! But you managed to escape and sneak back into the reception hall. That's when you switched the lantern in the event hall with the lantern in the hold, right? Did you see anybody then? Nope. Uh, the place was completely deserted. I guess because Pierce Butler guy had everybody gathered together somewhere. That makes sense. He must have been going over the cover-up plan with them. So clearly, the murder had already happened by the time Larry got out. They must have gotten everything ready fast and had the second reception soon after that. Then after that... Well... Then after that reception, Ellie went to clean up the reception hall. And as luck would have it, that's when she found the body in the lantern and brought it. Uh, I'd brought out or brought up. Mm, yeah. This blurry vision thing is really bothering. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening with you. I hope you're okay. Do you need to lay down or something? I don't know what's going on between the views and my blurry vision. This is really weird. We're not <laughs> usually barely a thousand views an hour at this time of night. Not till like eleven. I really feel like YouTube's shenanigans all messed up. I tried to do something nice for Ellie out of the goodness of my heart, and then this happened. Hmm. We still don't know exactly what happened during the actual murder itself. We'll just have to look into it along with the identity of the mystery person. So while the murder was taking place, you were locked up in the cabin. Did you see anything unusual while you were in there? In the cabin? Let's see... Well, there was that pterodactyl flying through the sky. That was pretty unusual. Wow. Seriously, Larry. <laughs> all right, that drawing of the pterodactyl you saw. <laughs> yeah, what's with all the air quotes? I really did see it, I swear. Larry, the time travel thing never actually happened, <laughs> which means you couldn't have really seen a pterodactyl flying through the sky. <laughs> Maybe you saw something that looked like one. 
Oh, what if he saw a bull flying? Like, one of those pega bull thingies, or pega cows. Those have wings, don't they? Yeah. Oh. Are you doubting the eye of a super popular picture book author? No, I'm just sure you saw something else and mistook that for a flying reptile. Nick, you're making me doubt my own eyes. Now I'm not even sure what I saw. Larry's drawing updated in the court record. Wow. Either way, you have no idea what actually happened at the real scene of the murder, do you? That's right! Uh, how can I uh, say that with it? I can say that with every confidence. Oh, wow. Would you look at the time? I better go. I have a book signing to get to. A book signing? Whose book? Whose do you think? Mine, of course. It's Law Stuxman book signing. I bet you went and around and begged a bunch of bookstores to let you have one, huh? Of course not! They're the ones coming around to beg me! Looks like I guessed right. <laughs> anyway, I have to go! I'll send you ten copies of my book that just got released the other day, alright? Ten? That's very generous of you. What are you talking about? I'm going to send you the bill too, of course! Ah, just put them down on an office expense or something. Well, pip pip. Wow, we have to buy. He's gonna send it to us. Larry, books. we don't need. Oh, he's gone. We have to buy ten of his books. I'll take a copy, boss, and I'll make sure it's signed, please. Oh boy, Trucy's not gonna like this office expense. Yeah, Trucy's like the um. Yeah, she's a Gestapo over here. The she's office. The, the runner of the ruler of the office. Yep. Yeah. Well, there goes our first lead. What do you want to tackle next, Nick? Uh, my sanity? Oh, right. We really should hit the streets now, huh? How about we first go see Ellen again? <laughs> Sounds good, boss. I bet I can cheer her up. I thought you were going to help Trucy with her magic show again today, Athena. Weren't you supposed to go meet her right now? Trucy said she was going to practice her new trick on you, if I recall. On me? Really? Trucy shows an important source of income for our agency, you know. We don't make that much anymore. You can leave the case to us, so go ahead and uh, run along now. Uh, but boss! Off you go, Athena! No! I don't want to die! You want a job? You go work! We better get going too, Maya. Okay! How come he doesn't make Maya do the the bad stuff? Why would he make Maya do that? He doesn't want to put Maya in harm's way. So he likes Maya. I should hope so. September 26th. Oh, two hours and seven minutes. Detention. Yep, yeah, she's, uh, she's cleaning. Okay. Detention center cleaning, visitors room. Cleaning, 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 cleaning. Oh! My poor, sweet Soren! I wonder how he's getting along without me! Hello, Ellen. Uh. Oh, Mr. Wright! What's gonna happen to the trial, do you think? Well, first and foremost... We have to hurry up and find this mystery person you saw just before you passed out. Do you think that person could be the real killer? It's quite possible, and if we can prove that, we can uh, clear you of all charges. Actually, would you happen to know where Soren is right now? He's usually busy with meetings all afternoon. He should be home by the evening. I think I better go have a chat with him later then. Why am I being treated to a view of someone's underwear? Mr. Wright, don't tell me! You suspect my sweet Soren! Well, he is the one who masterminded the whole second reception after the time skip. So I thought he might be able to tell us something. How could you, Mr. Wright? You can possibly think my Soren would ever kill anyone! Alright, alright, just calm down. None of you are accusing my Soren! Please, I'm not accusing anybody, so put the pan and ladle down, alright? <laughs> ladle. 
It's called a ladle. Whatever. Really? Sure, let's go with that. Cross my heart and hope to cross-examine. So for now, would you mind if I ask you a few more things about the case? Oh, she's back to being prim and proper lady. Better be careful not to provoke her. I don't want to get hit with a frying pan. Also, that poor guard in there. Soren. All right. Uh, could you tell me about Soren? There's nothing to tell. He's squeaky clean. All right, okay. Maybe I should avoid the topic of Soren right now. Let's talk about something else then. Fine, but you won't, won't hear a peep out of me about Soren. Talk about pulling teeth. All right, Pierce. Could you tell me about Pierce then? Pierce? He came to Sprocket Manor about a year ago as the family butler. He's now in charge of everything in the household. Only a year ago? Did he have some kind of special connection with the family? I'm just a maid, so I'm not privy to such things, I'm afraid. It might have been Soren's order, but Pierce is the one who coordinated the whole thing. He's the one who really orchestrated the grand time travel farce. He must have quite a bit of authority in that family. Yeah. Hmm. But no matter how good he is at his job, how could anybody gain that much influence in a single year? I really don't know. I mean, he is an excellent butler. Wouldn't that explain it? Hmm. Is it really as simple as that? Time travel. Alright, uh, what you thought was time travel was really just a cover-up carried up by your in-laws. Pierce said Soren was the one who ordered the whole thing. I still can't believe it, even if the second reception was fake. Soren would have never used time travel for something like that. He's very serious about his time machine research, you know. I heard there's a reason he's researching time machines, actually. Something about he wishes he could change something. But isn't the whole idea of traveling back in time itself a little fantastic? I don't think so. After all, Soren said real-time travelers do exist. Really now? You think he knows someone who actually traveled through time? That's right. I haven't seen it personally, but Soren said as much, so I believe it. Somebody who actually traveled through time, huh? It's pretty hard to believe. Thank you, Ellen. You're going out to do your investigation now, aren't you, Mr. Wright? Yeah, that's right. Please make sure you don't cause Soren any more trouble, okay? I'll do my best. I'm afraid I can't promise you that, though. What? Uh, please, whatever you do, please don't upset my poor Soren any further. I'm begging you. I'll do my best not to cause him any unnecessary trouble, okay? Oh, I couldn't bear it if Soren ever came under suspicion. Oh, I'd rather be found guilty myself. Yikes! Ellen, please, don't work yourself up like this. You don't want Soren to worry, do you? She literally has tissues that come out of the back of her head. Oh, I guess so. No, you're right. And the floodwaters recede once more. So what do we do now, Nick? Well, Ellen said Soren is usually in meetings until the evening, so let's save our house call until then. Why don't we go to the mooring dock and figure out our next move from there? Roger, Nick! All right, later, Ellen. September 22nd, Sprocket Park Mooring Dock. So, where do, should we start? Hmm, let's see. Are there any places we haven't examined yet? We re already investigated the reception hall at Sprocket Manor. I know. We haven't looked at the Vista deck or the hold yet. Hey, you're right. We've still got really important places left to examine, don't we? The Vista deck is the actual scene of the murder, right, Nick? 
and the lantern with the body in it was stored in the hold. I think there's a good chance we'll find some important clues in those locations. Do we know how to get to the hold? Good question. I think it was labeled in that diagram of the airship in this pamphlet. There it is! There's the hold. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Okay, into the hold we go. Alright. Investigate hold. Sorry that you're having fuzzy vision, Luke. I'm having fuzzy vision. Well, I mean, I do have a lot of um, castor oil all over me because I'm in pain. No, I don't think that's it. The flying chap will hold. There's the moo. I mean, there's the cow and there's a bull. Yeah. So this is the hold, huh? This is where Pierce orchestrated the whole cover-up operation. We better go over this place with a fine-tooth comb. Hey, Nick! Were we supposed to need a key card to get in here? Huh? Oh, yeah, you're right. I wonder why it's unlocked. I don't know who that is. How's it going, Mr. Wright? Oh. oh, it's Emma. How's it going, Mr. Wright? Oh, Emma, what are you doing here? Just a little independent investigating. For my own sake, gotta keep the mind sharp. Ah, so that's why the door security system was turned off for the police investigation. We'd like to investigate the hold ourselves. Would that be all right? Yeah, sure. The police just finished their examination anyway. Thanks. We'll just take a quick look around then. Oh, right. You should know that the floor doubles as a huge lift. You can use that lever way back there to raise it up the vista deck. The police inspected it already, but didn't find anything of the particular interest, it seems. If you do go up to the vista deck with the lift, be careful not to fall off. Huh. Got it. Thanks. That goes double for you, Maya. Yes, ma'am! Well, let's get the show on the road. Well, at least Maya isn't mean. Wait, isn't isn't Emma younger than Maya? Yeah, I know. Like she's talking down to Maya when Maya's like literally. Emma's like, twenty-seven. Oh, they're only a year off. Yeah, but still, she shouldn't be telling her what to do. She's well, I mean, she is. She's an authority figure, though. She's a police officer. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. All right, uh, I think we've reached as far as we're going to get. The views are really slow today. All right, guys and gals, um, whoa, I need to make sure I save this correctly. So we're on the second day of the investigation. Next time we'll be in the hold. Um, so in order to get another exciting episode of Ace Attorney, uh, you guys got to get a 1,000 views. That's the rule. Uh, that's how we do things here. Your next stream will be starting up um, once it hits uh, 40 likes. So the... Yee. Uh, Lego DC Super Villains is at 16 likes. Oops. That's not good. Um, I mean, that was made during the time that things were all kind of messed up. So we're going to shoot for 7.15 for the next uh, start of the stream. So if you guys could go over there and smash that like button, even if you're not going to watch Ace or Lego DC Super Villains, which I hope you will, uh, if you guys could head over there and smash the like button, uh, get that video so we can start up. Uh, it looks like YouTube started to purge the likes um, from this stream because we were close to 140 at one point. Yeah, they did purge the likes. Thanks for the at entertainment. No problem, Bruce. Uh, Bruce, if you could head over and everybody else to the link that's in the description, smash that like button so we can get uh, the um, LEGO DC Supervillain stream up on time. Uh, that'd be fantastic. So, um, basically, guys and gals, in order to get another episode of Ace Attorney, you have to get uh, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. That's 430 views by tomorrow morning. Uh, if not, then Ace Attorney will be back on Friday. Um, yeah. So. And thank you so much for the super chats and uh, and membership renewals today. Really appreciate that, everyone. Yep. If you guys uh, want to help the channel, you can always become a member. Memberships help tremendously. Uh, it's just $5 a month. We do have other tiers, but the $5 one is very affordable. And it helps Amber and I directly. So it also uh, is very important to the health of the channel. But um, see you guys on LEGO DC Supervillains. And hopefully we'll be starting at uh, 7.15.
7.15. Alright guys, God bless, happy gaming, thanks so much for watching, see you in the next stream.